so here to stay. Oh, to this hour we like for the red and white. Here, so here to stay. Morning, everybody. We're out on a dog walk this morning. Uh, it's going to be a quick one, I would imagine, because my dog was very, very busy yesterday um, playing with my brother's kids and all that, so he's knackered. Uh, but I just wanted to do a quick deadline day video while I'm walking. May as well make use of every second just to chat really about Teo Eden. Um, obviously, news broke yesterday that we'd had a, a, a bid in for Teo. Um, agreed a fee of around £500,000. Obviously, that will bring with it Plenty of comment, plenty of reaction. Um, but half a million pounds for Teo Eden, heading out to Blackburn Rovers. It looks relatively nailed on. Um, I've had no official comment at all. You know, it seems viable. It's the sort of team I would like to see him join. No disrespect to Luton or um, to Peterborough United, but they're Lincoln City in three years' time. That's where we want to be. That's where we want to go. The teams we've played regularly over my, my lifetime, Blackburn Rovers are not. They are the next level of team. They are, you know, 15, 20,000 fans. They are expected eventually to be knocking on the door of the Premier League again. They've won the Premier League. So they're a, they're a big club. And I think that they are a great destination for Teo. Um, I think he's a player that has undoubtedly um, improved over his time at Lincoln. I think he's top 10 championship material. Speaking to Michael a couple of weeks ago, he thinks he'll play in the Premier League. Um, I think his words were, without a doubt. So... You know, players like that don't hang around. And it's all right, people saying, you know, wow, well, that's what if we'd gone up, we could have kept these players. We could have kept George Grant because it was in his contract. Taylor would still be in the last year of his contract. So Taylor would still have been a target for the, not the vultures, but he would still have been a target for bigger clubs. That's, that's football. That's what we keep referring to as the model. It is what it is. Um, so I, uh, I think to, to start, I really wanted to pick up on the transfer fee. You know, I think there's an awful lot of people who say, oh, it's too cheap. On the face of it, it is too cheap. If he'd stayed for another six months, he could have gone for nothing. That would have been far too cheap. Um, so there's your start for 10. I think fullbacks, it's harder to get a decent price for. I remember um, the lad at uh, Luton moved to Leicester, to James Justin. He fetched a pretty packet. A couple of years younger than Teo, I think, when he moved. Um, Oxford have sold centre-backs for decent money. But I, I don't know. I, I think when you, you have to take into account, one, he's a defensive player, not an attacking player. Two, um, he, he is entering the last year of his contract. And, and I think that affects the fee. If he was tied to a, to a three or four-year contract, uh, then maybe he's worth a little bit more. And I have no doubt whatsoever, were that the situation, then we wouldn't have been in a position where we would would have accepted half a million pounds. But that is football. So, yeah, I'm sure we didn't pay that. Um, I'm told, uh, or some people have asked me about a potential sell-on fee to Fulham. Truth is, I don't know. Only people at the club will know that. Only people at the club will know how much that might be. I mean, some people have said um, it might be as much as 250000 If it is, it is. You know, at the end of the day, we have to pay them 250000 and we come out of it with 250000 Then there we go. You know, it's still a £250,000 profit to us. I'm not sure that it will be that much, but I don't know. And neither does really anybody else. And the people that do know, the Teos and the Jez Georges and the Michael Appletons and the Liam Scullies, they're not actually going to say, they're certainly not going to tell your mate on Twitter who then DMs you and tells you how much it's going to be. That's not really how it works. So, you know, we just have to, unfortunately, accept that this is a deal that's good for Lincoln City. Um, it's not good for the, for the squad, I suppose, because Teo for me, has probably been our best player this season when he's played, but it is what it is. Heavy, heavy um, rumours that Jamie Robson is coming the other way. And again, a player that I think we've all kind of, we've all watched out for, haven't we, since the original link. And, you know, when he was first linked, it was, why are we signing another left-back? Well, we weren't. Teo stays, we don't sign Jamie Robson. Teo goes, we look for the next person. Now, I do know, I mean, I tried again to Michael about this. I do know that he has connections at Dundee United. Um, I can't remember whether it was coaching badges or he did his degree with somebody there or something along those lines. So, you know, he's kind of got somebody on, on the inside at Dundee. A person like Michael Appleton's probably got somebody on the inside at almost every club. Um, so they've been aware of Jamie for a long while. And it's not like for like. Teo, remember, kind of was, I'm not going to say an enforced left back. But Teo played left back despite probably coming in initially as a midfielder. I liked him in midfield on his debut. Um, done really, really well at left back, don't get me wrong. So 
we're not signing a utility player. Now, that has benefits and it has drawbacks. Um, for instance, when we signed Teo, we knew that if we were short in midfield, we can drop him in and then Cohen Bramall or Max Melbourne could have played left back. He gave us options. You're not actually going to get that with Jamie Robson, by the looks of things. He is a left back. On the flip side, of course, that means that you've got a dedicated left back who's got, he's not, a, a, when I say jack of all trades, I certainly don't mean master of none when it comes to Teo. But he's, uh, Jamie Robson is a left back and that's what he does. That's what he plays. You know, he's going to put everything, all his training, everything into the, the, the left back position. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. I think there's pros and cons. You know, but you know, signing a left back to play left back, you know, what do you do? <laughs> you don't sign a central midfielder to play left back, do you? So I think he, um, he looks on paper a decent signing. It's like I always say, whenever anybody comes in, it's easy to say they look good on paper or they look good on championship manager. The only place that we need them to look good is on the green when they're wearing a Lincoln City shirt. So it's hard to judge. It'll always take a player a bit of time to settle in. You know, he's taking one or two of our new signings. I think Hakeem and Lass Sorensen probably a little time to settle in. Not so much Ted Bishop, uh, more just fitness with him. But he took Teo a time to settle in, didn't it, as well? I think that's almost certain, you know, beginning of last season, I remember a conversation I had to Michael uh, with Michael where Teo, Teo was on the bench and he hadn't really been mentioned in our rundown of the of the squad. And I said, it's up to him. It's up to him now. We'll give him the tools if he kicks on. It's due to him, not due to us. Nothing we've done wrong. So he's kicked on. Probably only came into his own from October onwards. Lots of criticism of him in the left-back position from people. Not many criticising him there now, is there? So, And I think I'd like people to hold that in mind when it comes to the likes of Hakeem. You know, it's so easy to say, well, Delican's not up to it. Jesus Christ. People like that, honestly. You know, it just it, it, it upsets me. It upsets me because I've tipped him to do well, but, you know, I've tipped Dean, Dean Cropper and Theo Archibald to do well in the past. So I have no shame if I get things wrong, but you've got to give players a chance. You know, Dean Cropper was classed probably as an average player for us after 18 months. Theo Archibald got a, a year and he's now actually doing really well at Leighton Orion and could come back a much better player. So we've got to give these players time. And if Jamie Robson comes in and in his first game, misplaces a pass you've got to stick with him haven't you you've got to stick with these players so it's going to be a busy day uh i mean i've got some hello so i'm going to go through some comments quickly uh brian rundle good good lad morning uh, gary how i hope you're well i'm very well i wasn't yesterday but more on that in a minute uh jimbo morning morning mate get a job uh helgi morning gary you're right pal hope you're well no doubt it is no doubt Norfolk, I would imagine. Mr. Keneally has been back to his native Manchester, so he'll be unintelligible for a week as he slips back into his broad mank brogue. Uh, Stuart Borthwick. Teo is a fair bit better than Scott Wharton, who Blackburn loaned to us a progress of a sort. Yeah. You know, now we're selling two players to Blackburn. We're not loaning their players. And when we do bring loans in, I would expect, you know, players perhaps maybe even from further up than that. So uh, big morning to Sean. Hope you're well. Big morning to Cornell. Hope you're well, Cornell. A good evening to Sam over in New Zealand. Good evening. Hope you're well. Uh, Kia ora. Uh, good morning to Adam. Good morning to Stuart Wells. Now, he doesn't say good morning because he's all business. Uh, but do you have any articles written for later? No, I don't. And that's the honest truth. I've no press releases. I've got nothing written for later. I've got absolutely no confirmation of what's happening at all. We all hear rumours. Um, I only hear what's happening if one, I go down to the EPC and chat to Michael, at which point I don't tell people anyway. Uh, and secondly, I hear when the press release comes out. So that's that. Nick Oxbury, morning, mate. Hangover gone now. Would you try and get Scully on a new contract now? Well, I think he signed a new contract last year, didn't he? So um, I think he signed one towards the end of last season. So for me, you know, let's not, let's not overreact. What I'd say about the Scully rumours is a lot of that came from that transfer centre nine account on Twitter and why do people take that as gospel? It, it just baffles me. Everyone's been coming to me saying, you know, Scully's going, we've had bids for Scully. Not to my knowledge, we haven't. You know, and I do know of other players that, that we've had interest in who, who we've either rebuffed it or, you know, they're not going anywhere but Anthony Scully isn't one of them and that's not to say he's not wanted, that's to say he's Lincoln City player, he's committed to Lincoln City, he's contracted for longer to Lincoln City, and just because he scores a couple of goals in a, in a game, that's not going to kind of prompt a move. And, and now I've said that, he'll probably move later on today for, for, for big money, but to my knowledge, no, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't get the, the worry here. Uh, 
Mr. Butler, good point, Mateo. How was viewed by many fans in the first, first third of last season? I remember defending him on Match Day Live uh, against a whole raft of people saying, Teo's mm-hmm. not a left back, he's not a natural left back, get a proper left back in. You know, he's giving the ball away too much. Um, I mean, he did against Fleetwood, was it? I think it was Fleetwood, who drew 0 0. It was Mark Hone's first game of the season. And, and Mark Hone kind of commented on the radio and said, you know, he's given the ball away a couple of times. And people hear a comment like that, it fits their narrative. And instantly it's, you know, he's not a natural left back. And, and okay, people are entitled to an opinion. Absolutely. Um, I think he, he, he was a natural left back. I think he did well for us. I think he didn't have a stronger start as he did a finish. But then that's the Mike Clapperton way, isn't it? Bring players in, train them up, get them used to the system, and, and, and they improve over time. And um, you know, believe me, this Lincoln City side will be better at the end of October, or at the end, even maybe the beginning of October, than than it is right now. Not at least not because we've got players coming back, that as well, but because the players that we are bringing in will will settle and they'll get used to our patterns of play and we'll look better. And look, I remember a couple of years ago when the transfer deadline ended the day before the season started. I've, I'm all for that. I'm not for this. Not for this month kind of where the teams, some teams that are able to get business done early and it might be panicky business. It might push the prices up. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not for that at all. And I, I actually think, I mean, we talk in a conversation with somebody the other day about the transfer business this summer and look, the players that clubs are signing in this summer are not any better than the players they signed last season, but they're costing more because certain clubs are going, well, we want to get our business done. So we'll pay. 1 million for this player will pay 10 grand a week for this striker. And, you know, if Charlie White last year was earning six grand a week at Sunderland, let's say, and now he's earning 10 grand a week at Wigan, then another striker who was earning three grand a week might suddenly think, well, I want five grand a week. He hasn't got a better player, has he? It's just been the, the price has been pushed up. And I genuinely think ending the transfer window during the season contributes to that because I think teams think, well, if we got our business done early and get off to a good start, and, and, and so they put the prices up. And I was chatting to someone at the club a few weeks ago, and, and they made the point that um, we try and sell Lincoln City. So we sell the training ground. We work hard with players to show them what we do on and off the field. We don't overspend. And we saw that a couple of years ago with Tyler Walker when we wanted to sign Tyler Walker. The rumours, which I can neither confirm or deny, were that we had offered him three grand a week. I think it was... Um, it was a loan deal, obviously, but we were obviously covering the wages. And then Mansfield came in with a deal that almost doubled that based on performances, etc. And he went to them and we signed John Akindi. And I think Lincoln refused to go that extra, not because we couldn't pay it, not because we couldn't afford it. We could. Lincoln City on skin. We could afford to, to push the envelope, but it has a knock-on effect. In two years' time, that player's flopped, but you're still paying him big money, as we've seen with John Akindi at Gillingham. So I think... You know, you've, you've got to be sensible, but some clubs are not doing that. Some clubs, Wigan, instead of selling Wigan Athletic, and, and yeah, I might be out of order here, I don't know. But instead of selling Wigan Athletic, what they look what they look to do is go, it's 10 grand a week. And the player goes, yeah, I'll sign for them. Um, and there you go. And suddenly you've set the benchmark and then the teams below you go, shit, they've paid 10 grand a week. And the players that are then still on the market are going, well, as I say, he's worth, I'm worth eight grand a week. Well, you're only worth six. It's been a good summer. Um, and I think trying to get that business done early inflates the market early, and it means that you've got this now, deadline day. Five games into the season, Lincoln City squad is half complete. And for the league games that we've seen, some of them have had a pre-season feel. This player isn't fit yet. That player isn't fit yet. This player hasn't had a good pre-season. And that's not good, actually, for players' fitness and injuries, because a player needs a pre-season. They need a pre-season to kind of to, to get up to speed, to get match fit, to get understand their club sorry I've got a thing on the phone and they haven't and some of our players haven't had that this season but you know I, I know it's the same for every club except the ones that are spending big I just think for us it's even more harsh or harsher should I say um, because we were in the playoff final and we lost so we couldn't start moving for our targets you know we uh, to be honest Sunderland and uh, Oxford probably had similar summers because they obviously they got maybe an extra week to, to us, um, so we were certainly in a, not in a great boat. That look, that isn't why we've got so many injuries. Let's not be on it. Let's let's not beat around the bush. We we've got some injury prone players, and we've had some bad luck, and and that's contributed to the situation now. But look, I'm going way off tangent here because I came on to talk about Teo Eden, and I was looking through the uh, the comments. So let's keep going through. 
Um, Stuart has now said good morning. Well, thank you, Stuart. It's nice of you to uh, to to be polite, Bonds. Um, if you could hand pick any striker in League One to play for the Imps, who would you pick and why? Great question. Um, great question that I haven't given any thought to whatsoever. Look, I, I'll be honest. I really like Mo Issa, uh, at, at MK. He's obviously really kind of kicked on this season. He's scoring goals for them regularly. The problem with Mo Issa is he doesn't fit into the Lincoln City setup because the way that we play does um, dictate that you need a hard-working striker, somebody who drops back, somebody who's physical, somebody that can hold the ball up. And Issa is very much a get 10 players putting the ball in the area for me and I'll score you some goals. And, and that's not how we play. So I think if I was to pick one striker who I think would do a good job in the Lincoln City setup now, um, and I kind of rubbished it a little bit last season, actually, but I'm a hypocrite, so I don't care. And um, Jaden Stockley, decent player, strong, holds the ball up, combative, will put an elbow in where he needs to. Um, yeah, decent player. And, and look, Saturday, I think we saw it from Matt Taylor. You know, he's 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 another kind of striker, and they're, they're all in, in the the Tom of, of Hopper ilk. Some are a little bit different in terms of of their finishing ability, etc. But a hard working striker is one I think you've got to think about picking. Um, but that's not who we'll sign today. If somebody kind of came to me today and said, "Which striker would you really like to sign?" Look, we've seen him mentioned. Ellis Sims would be brilliant. I'd love to see him come to the football club. What player he was, he is. Whether that's likely or not, I don't know. Deadline day gets you dreaming, doesn't it? It's like Christmas Eve when you're a kid and you're laid in bed and you're thinking, oh, I want the Lincoln shirt. When I was a kid, like, I want the Lincoln shirt and I want an Amiga 600 and I want a bike and I want the scale electrics. And you get up and, you know, it's been a tough year for mum and dad. You get a hand-knitted card in a Spootio set. Um, don't get me wrong. I was always lucky at Christmas. But it has you dreaming of things you know you're never going to get. You know, where's my PC at a grand? It's not going to happen. So... Deadline day does that. It's why we thought we were going to sign Danny Hilton as a fan base one at the other year and we got Lee Angle. You know, there's your 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 PC to your Commodore Vic 20. So Lee Curtis, has Bramwell convinced you he's our first choice left back? No. No, he hasn't. Um I, I, he's got the ability. I'm not going to start slagging Cohen Bramwell off. But no, because we we're only going to sell Teo Eden if we can bring another left back in. And the player that we're going to bring in may cost us according to reports, quarter of a million pounds. And if he does, he's our first choice left back because it's probably as much as we've ever spent on a footballer. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, t what Cohen has convinced me of is that he's got an important role to play in the squad. He's a different type of left back. He's an attacking left back. I would like to see him play um, on the left side of a five-man defence or three, three centre-halves with Bramall in that kind of wing-back role. Because I think with his pace, he could do very, very well. I think he's a decent winger. I think his delivery is good. I think he could cause a lot of problems. On the wing, he's got a bit of the Zach Elbazetti about him, hasn't he? The, you know, the explosive pace and wants to beat a player. But he has some defensive capabilities as well. So I think that's, in, in my opinion, he's, he's a very, very good squad player at this level. He's going to get better. Um, who knows, in, in six, 12 months' time, he might have done the uh, uh, the Teo role. So uh, who knows? Mr. Ray, good morning, Sam. Do we need someone in the same old as Hopper or someone to offer something different if plan A isn't quite working? Uh, Lundelo is injured, but he seems similar. I probably think we need a Tom Hopper alternative, but we need somebody that is kind of like Hopper, but also can play as part of a two. So, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I don't think we've seen enough of Lundelo to to really judge. I'll just make sure I thought I had a vehicle to really judge him. Do you know what I mean? I don't think we've seen enough to say he's this type of player or that type of player. He's meant to be quick. He's meant to be able to get in behind. He's probably the man that can play as part of a two as well. So we just need another striker. And it, it, you know, it's easy for me to say, well, because we play this way, we should have this player. But Michael might have in his mind to go, well, actually, I want this type of player and then we can play another way. And, and a classic example is, is Jack Payne and Brennan Johnson. You know, Payne was technically a 10. Johnson, when we signed him, was technically a 10. But Michael obviously had it in his mind that one type of 10 wasn't the same as the other. And if he gets rid of Jack, he can then bring in Brennan. And then we kind of switched it up a little bit. And the way we started to play, we could switch to 4-4-2, 4-2-3-1, 4-1-3-2. Uh, so, you know, potentially um, he'll want a player that offers both something different and something similar. What I do think is that he won't want a Cameron, a Cameron? Callum Morton style player. I think he's going to want somebody with a bit more of a physical presence, somebody that can 
can handle himself a bit better against bigger defenders. And I feel cruel saying that about Callum because he had a great game against Burton, didn't he? Was it Burton away? And he was hammered by their centre-backs and he, he looked so strong and then he just disappeared. He just tailed away. And I got warning signs when he said, you know, I'm being asked to play a role I'm not familiar with. When a player says that in public, it speaks volumes. It says more than the actual words. And I remember James Wilson saying something similar to me. He'd been playing right back in an inter- and I interviewed him and he said, you know, it's not my usual position, but I'll do a job when called upon. And for me, he's, 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 he starts with a negative. It's not my usual position. And that makes you think, ooh, hang on. Harry Anderson said it when he went back to Peterborough and they asked him to play right wing back. It's not my usual position. When a player says that, you worry. So that was my thought on Callum Morton. Um, let's have a look. Uh, got a little bit more coming up. Stuart Wells says, should we sign like a Matt Reed? <laughs> Do you know what? Matt wouldn't fit. Matt Reed wouldn't fit into this Lincoln City side. Uh, but a player with Matt Reed's character um, and his application uh, would be would be superb. And I actually think we've got a player in our squad who, in terms of character around the dressing room, is as important. That's Remy Longdon. I think he's brilliant around the dressing room. I know that you know, football's played on a field, not on a dressing room. But Remy has that kind of everybody likes him thing, kind of aura that Matt Reed had, massively important. Dan Odd, what do you think on the goalkeeper front? I think if we can get one, we will do. I don't think it's pressing. I think Josh Griffiths is our number one, like it or lump it. Um, he's England under 21. He's just been called up to England under 21. He's a good goalkeeper. And what he needs is a settled back four in front of him. What he needs is two centre-halves who communicate well and, and who work well together. And, you know, Max Melbourne has slotted in adequately, I think, at, at left centre-back. But he ain't a left centre-back. He ain't our first choice left centre-back. And good teams... And, and I had a conversation with, with Pete the other day, my friend Pete. Good teams win titles by having a centre-back pairing that stays the same for 40 games a season, bare minimum. And that's because not only do they understand when to go, when to stay, what each other's strengths are, but they operate well with the goalkeeper as well. And that's what Josh needs. And last season we started with, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Jackson and Monsma. And I think Jackson and Monsma played 10, 12 games before Joe Walsh came in. And, and we did really well. We looked defensively strong. And that gave um, Alex Palmer a great base to start from. So I think if we can bring a keeper in and get Sam Long out on loan, so Sam plays 40 senior games, superb. I think if we don't bring a keeper in on loan, I don't think that there's panic. I, th- I don't think there's as much panic as if we weren't bringing a striker or a winger, personally. Uh, comments coming in thick and fast now. This is good news. Mr. Robertson, hope you're uh, well, mate. Red your latest piece. Interesting you say they may wouldn't want us going into the season weaker than when we finish. It's fair to say we're much weaker. Depth and ability. Depth, no. Disagree. Don't think we're weaker in squad depth. Um, I think pound for pound, player for player, uh, we've got more depth in certain areas and we've got left depth, less depth in certain areas. But I think it it balances out. And I think if we do bring the three players in that we wish to today, even with Teo Gerd going, I think in terms of squad depth, we're not too bad. I think the problem that we've got this season is that the injuries have, have, have stripped us bare. And if you start totting them up, actually, we've, we've got a decent squad. You can't go into a season carrying 28 or 29 because when they are fit, you can't manage that. And they're, and they're 28, 29, probably 9, 10, 12. They were not top-end League One. I think we're weaker in the loan respect because we've got three lads on loan. I think we're weaker in key attacking areas. But I think if you were to take the injuries away and put the players at full fitness which will happen and you've got Maguire and Scully and Hopper and Unlundaloo and Ted Bishop and Akiba Delican is that weaker than when we had to play Callum Morton as a number nine at the end of last season not I'm not sure it is and also when I say a weaker stronger than last season I mean in terms of the players we own because loan players can be a bit of a roll of the dice and we've seen it before big names coming on loan and flop Names that we hadn't really heard of, with, with respect, Brennan Johnson coming in, tearing it up. But I think if you look pound for pound at players that we own this season compared to players that we owned last season, I actually think we have a stronger squad. There are players that have yet to show it. There are players that are yet to prove it. But I think 
to, I think, our squad, our assets, when the lone players have gone, I think we're in a better place. We are at the back because we own TJ Ioma for a start and we haven't lost anybody across the back. And if we lose Teo, we'll bring in uh, Robson. Melbourne's come back. He's more of an asset than he was at the end of last season. I think in midfield, OK, we've lost, we lost George Grant. What, the only central midfielder we've lost that we own? And we've brought in Bishop and Sorensen. And I think Bishop will be equal to, or certainly has the ability to be equal to George Grant. So in the central midfield area, we haven't massively lost out wide in terms of players we own. And that's key for me because you're talking about building a squad, building assets that you can move forward. It's almost like building a property empire, isn't it? Out wide, we've now got Maguire. We've now got a Delican. Lost Harry, lost El Bazzetti. Archibald's out on loan. Arguably, you could say that we need an addition there, but we know that. That's what we want on deadline day. Up top, Hopper was the only striker we owned last season. He's the only striker we own this season. So again, in that terms, yes, potentially weaker through the centre. But again, as you say, Craig, quite correctly, big few hours, because it is. It's not a season-defining big few hours. It's just a big few hours. Kate Jackson. Morning, Kate. Morton was not fit for purpose. I watched him in the Fleetwood game a few weeks ago and he refused to move for others, but then got proper pissy when he didn't get the ball like a spoiled child. I remember another player coming in like that. Dale Southwell. Um, do you remember Dale getting taken off at North Ferriby and kicking off when he got taken off? I remember that. I thought he was, was similar in that respect. Decent players, probably in a better setup or a diff, not a better setup, that's the wrong word. Different setup. Might thrive. It's like Moisa, Peter Brafan said. Moisa is great if you play for Moisa. If you play for a team, Moisa is not so great. MK Dons, no, he can score goals. New managers come in, he can just his philo- adjust his philosophy accordingly. So, and you know, there's no right or wrong. Some might say, well, Isa scored three goals, and you know, Lincoln City have struggled to score three goals from open play in the in the league this season. I think we've only got two from open play. So you could say their their technique or their approach is working better potentially at the minute. You know, games over over 46 seasons. We 46 seasons. Jesus Christ, 46 games. We shall see. Kevin McCarthy agrees with me. Settled back four is key to everything for us now. It is. Settled back four and Liam Bridcut staying fit. Because that's when we looked our best. When you have that base, a settled back four and Bridcut playing just in front of them, that's when Lincoln City can then thrive. But once, once you've got foundations, you can build a house. And it's that simple. Uh, what about Charlie McNeil from Man United on loan as a forward? Yeah, potentially. Uh, uh, yeah. Probably like to see somebody that's already got the senior experience, hence Sims. But then you don't know, do you? Because, you know, last year at this time or last year before we signed Brennan Johnson, we were going through and, you know, you mentioned names. I think some people say, well, let's get Tyler Walker back on loan. But seriously, you know, and then Brennan Johnson, probably the best loan sign in Lincoln City have made ever. I don't know. David Sommer certainly had an impact, but not over a whole season. Ashley Grimes had an impact, but we were relegated. You tell me. And you tell me who was the best loan signing we've ever had. You've probably got five minutes before I have to wrap this up and the dog wants to, I've got to put the dog back on the lead. So you tell me. Craig Harvey, do you think if a keeper comes in, it'll be a more experienced one? Pass. Likely. I, I, it would, I would probably see it being, yeah, someone in his, in his twenties, late twenties, maybe who's likely to have a role in developing Josh Griffith as well. Uh, Mr. Ray, any danger of Looney Scully today? I addressed her at the top of the interview. I really don't think so. Um, certainly nothing I've heard at all. And as I've said, I know one or two of our players have attracted attention, but I can't see us losing Scully. I, I think that that has been internet rumour blasted out of all proportion. I really do. And, and you know me, normally I make a video like this, I say this, and then exactly the opposite happens. So he's probably driving to Peterborough as we speak. Who knows? Um, David Pickwell, Ellis Sims from Everton would be the one. I'd love him. What a signing he'd be. And again, he would be... This year's Brennan Johnson, not in the style of play, but in the way that he would impact the side, in the way that he would become, you know, almost first team, I think, straight away. He was outstanding for Blackpool last year. He was a constant thorn in our side when we drew 2-2. He would be a belt in signing. Lee Curtis, do you think the social media worlds will be happy or doom and gloom at the end of today? Depends which ones you talk to, doesn't it? Some of them will be happy, whoever we sign. They'll find the positives in Lee Angle signing, because I did. 
uh, and others will be underwhelmed no matter who we sign. If we don't sign Tyler Walker, they won't be happy. That's social media for you. It highlights, it magnifies both ends of the spectrum. And those that are in the middle ground get lost. Try and be in the middle ground. Try and be objective. Could Palmer come back? No, move on. We should have got Morgan Rogers back on loan before he went to Bournemouth. Not that easy, Michael, I'm afraid. Bournemouth off the championship football. You can't just kind of go and get the players. He needed to play at the next level up. We weren't at the next level up. If we'd been promoted, perhaps we would have been. Perhaps we would have been. But there we go. You can't do it. Kate Jackson says, Sommer was the best loan player that we've ever had. He was a 30-goal-a-season striker at League Two. Johnson was inconsistent. Fair points. Mr. Butler, Tony Woodcock was pretty pretty special when he was a boy. He was, but he only had a short spell. You know, uh, he's the best loan player that we've ever had. You could say Carl Court, £7 million. He went on four, didn't he? A lot of money by today, but, he, you know, he, he wasn't. So, I suppose it depends how you define it, really, doesn't it? Excuse me. I think in terms of impact over a 46-game season, you'd be hard-pushed to find somebody better than Brennan. In terms of immediate impact that saves the club from relegation, David Sommer. I'll tell you something else. If Damage Sommer was it was available now in the same form with the same ability that he was when we signed him back in 2010, I'd take him now and he'd do a job at this level all day long. Right, I'm nearly done now. I'm actually almost at the end there. That's my house, just at the end of the lane. So um, I'm going to go sign off. I've not had any emails while we've come through, so there's nothing imminent. I will try and keep you up to date as much as possible. I won't be doing a live blog today, uh, just because I've got my real job to do as well. So, But what I will probably do, if we're still looking at signing players, finishes uh, another Facebook Live, just to kind of take us through till, till 11 o'clock and get your thoughts on any when we have signed anyone we might be signing and any other deals through the day, but we'll see how that goes. So, uh, look, thank you very much indeed uh, for watching and I shall speak to you all again very soon. Goodbye.